body on the cross His blood poured out for us The weight of every curse upon Him Christ, oh 
What a beautiful name it is What a beautiful name it is The name of Jesus Christ my King What a beautiful name it is Nothing compares to this
literally to see you guys. I'm so thankful to be back. I, I hate that I had to miss uh, last week, but I love you guys, and I thank you for all your prayers for me. Uh, I, I was once blind, but now I see. Amen. And so, uh, yeah, so that's a good thing. But we're, we're just here to worship God and his goodness and all of his blessings. Um, so just stand at this time as we begin to worship. And we're going to have the, the kids up here and the youth doing their little dance thing and everything. So just worship the Lord with us this morning. I was buried beneath Come 
good to see you in the house of the Lord this morning. Thank you for joining us here at Westside Emmanuel Baptist Church. This morning as we gather together, I want to just give you a couple of quick announcements. If you're here for the first time, we welcome you to Westside. Thankful for your presence here with us. There are some connect cards or even QR codes in front of your pew that you can scan. This is, we have a record of your visit. As you can tell this morning, our youth are helping us out today. Our deacons and men, some of our men folk, will be helping us out next week. As you know, we can't move out this way right now or that way, but we can move you up on stage. And so, um, so just be ready. Uh, ladies, you'll be one of these times too. And so if we need a choir just to give you some seats, an opportunity to find a place to sit, there you'll go. And so uh, next week, that whole section right there, y'all will be up on the uh, next week. We'll see what happens, all right? We are glad that you're here, though. For a moment, would you take a, a moment just to look around, find somebody, shake their hand, greet each other in the name of the Lord this morning. Amen. Good to see y'all. Amen. You call my name and I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness To your glorious day You call my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness To your glorious day You can be seated. Teenagers, y'all can be seated as well. Amen. Hey, I want to show you real quick as we get started today. We've been looking over this Chosen series, and so if you turn in your Bible to John chapter 4, this morning, instead of just uh, reading it, I want to show it to you, John chapter 4, before we continue to worship a God who is a God of miracles. Listen for a moment and watch the screen as we're seated today. Give me a drink. That's bad, huh? What? You, would you ask her to drink from me, a Samaritan? And a woman? Aren't I unclean to you? Won't you be defiled by this vessel? I say if you knew who I am, you'd be asking me for a drink. Really? And I would give you living water. Would? Except that you have nothing to draw water with, and this is a deep well. But Jewish water is better than Samaritan water. Hmm? That's not what I said. Are you a better man than our ancestor Jacob, who dug this well? Your water is better than his? And everyone who drinks this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks the water that I give him will never be thirsty again. Wouldn't that be nice? The water I give will become in a person a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Really? Yes, really. Prove it. First, go and call your husband, then come back. I will show you both. I don't have a husband. You are right. You've had five husbands. And the man you're living with now is not your husband. <laughs> Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain. But you Jews insist Jerusalem is the only place for true worship. And the time is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. God is spirit. And the time is coming and is now here. That it won't matter where you worship, but only that you do it in spirit and truth. That is the kind of worshiper he's looking for. It won't matter where you're from. Or what you've done. Until the Messiah comes and explains everything and sorts this mess out, including me, I don't trust in anyone. This Messiah you speak of, I am He. I have not revealed myself to the public as the Messiah. You are the first. picked the wrong person. I came to Samaria just to meet you. <laughs> Do you think it's an accident that I'm, I'm here in the middle of the day? I am rejected by others. I know, but not by the Messiah. I'm going to tell 
<laughs> I was counting on it. <laughs> you promised. I promise. This man told me everything I've done. Oh, he must be the Christ! <laughs> Water. You forgot your arm. Church. 
Come on, church, lift up your voices this morning.
in the presence of my Savior. of the Lord and celebrate his goodness this morning. You can be seated, but as you're seated, I'm going to ask our children to just be dismissed for Children's Church. We're going to sing that again, just that I will call upon the name of the Lord, right? This morning, kids, y'all have the privilege of having the Westmorelands leading us in Children's Church, so we want to invite our kids to be dismissed at this time. Drake, look at the people now. That's his before face. So uh, we just praise the Lord. Look, if you're new here and you're wondering where your kids go, right after service, follow the flags. You'll see flags that lead right to the children's building. And so they'll be able to pick them up right afterwards. And so we we'll invite you to do that. As they're dismissed for Children's Church, though, they gather together for that time. I want to I get to you to sing that part again. As we just sing, Lord, I'm going to call upon the name of the Lord. These teenagers are here. I don't know why they're sitting down, but they're about to sing real loud. Y'all might as well stand up just for a second. And, uh, I had them sit down, but y'all still young enough to stand up. Would you sing that as we just get ready to worship the Lord, going to his word in John chapter 4? Let's sing it together. I will call upon the Lord. Let's sing together. on back down. Amen. As you have your Bible this morning, I'm going to invite you to turn to John chapter 4. Amen. John chapter 4 this morning. And so uh, as we gather together, now look, I already gave some of them a pre-warning. If I say run, y'all got to say tell that. And so I say run, y'all say? Okay, so just keep that in mind. If I ever say run, bruh. Where are my teenagers? So I tried, I got y'all right there. So I said the word run, y'all say what? Tell that. Thank you very much. So if I say run, y'all say? All right, good, good, good. So I just want to make sure that they are on the same page as me. Good morning. Thank you for joining us this morning as you turn in your Bible to John chapter 4. Excited about looking into what God has to say to us this morning. And so John chapter 4 is where we are at. You already saw it on the video, right? You saw this story about the woman at the well. And so there's like 40-something verses. We won't go over all of those. But if I were to preach some of those this morning, one of the ones I'll probably preach is verse 4. Verse 4, I could have preached about this one in verse 4. It says, but that Jesus needed to go through a place called Samaria. So I could have preached verse 4 where Jesus needed. Now you may be saying to yourself, why did Jesus need to go through Samaria? I don't know if y'all know this, teenagers or not, but Samaria was a place that they did not like. Jewish people and Samaritans did not get along. It was just part of the situation. That was the, the racial issue. It was a cultural issue. They just did not get along ever. They didn't like each other. And so why would Jesus go through a place called Samaria as a Jewish man? And it was pretty much forbidden for any man to go and speak to a woman at the time. So why would Jesus find a Samaritan woman? And the Bible says that Jesus needed to go through Samaria. He needed to go through there. Why? 
Because he wanted to meet this woman at this well. He had to go and meet her right where she was. Listen to me, friends. Jesus will meet you right where you are. Run. Thank y'all. Y'all got to help me out a little bit this morning. Jesus, listen, he will meet you right where you are in the middle of everything that you're going through. He will meet you where you are and no matter who you are. That is good news this morning that you ought to run. Okay, thank you for that. I could have preached this morning also verse 10. I know that if I don't talk to y'all this morning, y'all going to be sleeping and getting busy and stuff. And so I'm just trying to keep y'all engaged this morning. So verse 10, I could have preached about this idea in verse 10 where it says that Jesus answered and he talked about this gift and the water that he could have given this woman. And she said, you know what? Well, where's this water and water welling up to eternal life? The reality was that this woman was thirsty. Do y'all still use that term? I don't know, maybe the teenagers may be the only ones that know this, but thirsty means that she was a woman who had some needs that she couldn't quite feel. This here was a woman who was looking for love in all the what? Wrong places. This here was a woman who dealt with some things, and so here was this woman who had, the Bible says that this was a woman who had five husbands, and she had to go get water in the middle of the day. Women didn't do that. They went early in the morning when it was still cool, but she tried to get away from everyone else, and so this woman finds herself in the middle of the day right out here. She was always looking for something to fill the thirst inside of her, but she couldn't find anything. So Jesus says, look, I'm going to give you living water and you will never be thirsty again. I don't know about you. Uh, look, 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 look next to you on the right and the left. Would you do that? As you look at that person next to you, are they thirsty? <laughs> Do, do they have that look? Now, Now, some of y'all may be parched. You, you may be like, well, I am kind of thirsty, Pastor. That's not what I'm talking about this morning, okay? <laughs> the reality is that sometimes we are looking for love, looking for fulfillment, trying to fill this vessel of our lives in all kinds of different ways. It might be money. It might be relationships. It might be sex. It might be drugs. You're just finding a way to fill that empty spot in your life. Well, that's what this woman did. And so Jesus says, look, I'm going to give you living water. And this morning, you may be thirsty. But I could have preached that, but I'm not going to preach on that this morning. Verse 16 says this. Verse 16, I could have preached about the fact that Jesus dealt with this woman's sin. Verse 16, he talks about, look, go, go call your husband. She's like, well, you know, uh, I, I ain't got no husband. He said, well, you know, you're right. You not only had one, two, three, four, five. You're like, you know, Zsa Zsa Gabor or somebody like that. Isn't that. Didn't she get married a lot? I'm looking at y'all. Like, you know, why am I looking at these people? Like, you know, I got to look at this. You know, some of y'all know what I'm talking about. You know, uh, or, or, or what's that other girl who had the, the perfume? Liz Taylor. Yeah, thank you. So, you know, so she was like that. She was looking for love. But Jesus didn't just let that slide. No, he actually addressed her sin. He said, look, you, this is what the reality is. This is what your needs are. And so he addresses her sin. He points every one of those out. And he points them out to show her the real problem. I could have preached about sin and how Jesus will point out our sin and show us the real issue that's going on. Uh, the reality is that Jesus will deal with us. I could have preached verse 21 where he says, look, woman, the reality is that you know these people worship here on this mountain. Jerusalem's worship there. And then Jesus says, you know what the reality is? Is that one day the Father seeks the worshipers who will worship in spirit and truth. It's not about the hymns that you sing, praise songs. It's not about piano, drums, guitar. The Bible says, look, one day we ought to worship God in spirit and in truth. And so that's the kind of worshipers that Jesus is looking for. It is not about the style. It is not about all those things. But it is about worshiping Jesus in spirit and truth. I could have preached on that. I could have also preached verse 26 where Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. The first person that outside of his disciples revealing it to the public that Jesus revealed, I am the Messiah, was to this woman. This woman who had mistakes. This woman who had five husbands. This woman who wasn't even living with the guy who was her husband. This woman who everybody looked down on. This woman who people had issues with. This woman who everybody said, you know what, you're not worth anything. This was the woman that Jesus First, reveal himself too. Jesus can still use the unusable, unloved, and unlovable kind of people. That's what I could have preached on, but that's not what I'm preaching on this morning. But if you have your Bible, I, I want you all to look there at, at John chapter 4, verse 28. And the idea that I want you to give this morning is run and... Thank you all. Run and tell that. Run. 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 Okay, thank y'all. John chapter 4, verse 28. When you find it in honor of the Lord and his word, why don't you stand with me as we read this passage of scripture together. Just John chapter 4, verse 28. The woman then, the Bible says in John chapter 4, verse 28, the woman then left her water pot. She went her way into the city and said to the men, 
come and see a man who told me all things that I ever did. Could this be the Christ? Father, I thank you this morning for your word, this opportunity to come as your people have gathered. I thank you for what you're going to speak to us through your word. May we, Father, leave this place with the same heartbeat as this woman that we might go and tell the world about a Savior whose name is Jesus Christ in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Go ahead and be seated this morning. You'll notice there, did you see that in your Bible? Go ahead and turn to your Bible. If you guys don't have a Bible, there's one on the side. You can take one, pass it down, and they'll get you one. The reality is in John chapter 4, verse 28, the Bible says that then the woman then left her water pot, water pot and she went her way into the city. Can I tell you, if you read some other translations, yours may actually read it this way. It doesn't say that she just went. It actually says that she went and she ran. She ran. I don't know if your, your version says that, but here this woman, she went and, and ran. She came with her head down. She left running. She ran. Run and th th this woman was there. And when she came, she was depressed and sorrowful. She'd been through things, but when she left, she left differently. She walked one way with her head down, but when she left, she left running. She ran and tell that. See, this was a woman who, as we look at her, she ran away from everyone. She ran away from all of her issues, all of her struggles in the middle of this day. But yet in the middle of that time, we see that here is a woman who left change. I want you to hear something this morning. When I look at this woman, look at her life, look at her situation, here's one thing that I learned about this woman is that she ran and she left her water pot behind. If you have a bulletin this morning, you can fill that out. She ran and left her pot behind. Verse 28 simply says that. It says she left and she left her water pot. What do you think about this for a moment? Why did she come up there in the middle of the day? Why did she come up there to this well, the, the well that she had been to? Why'd she do that? Why'd she go to this place? Why was she there in the middle of the day? Why was she there? What did she carry? What was she looking for? She was looking for water. She knew that the water would be in the well. And so she went there and she held with her her water pot. Her water part signified and symbolizes everything that was important that she needed in her life. She filled everything. They needed water to survive. And so this water pot was used to quench her thirst. It was used to fill her up. It was used for those people around her that she would go and, 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 and come to this well. This well was everything to her. And yet she left the very thing that she filled and quenched her thirst with Every single day, she left her water pot behind. Can I tell you this morning? Some of us need to leave our pot behind. Now, you take that however you want to take it. <laughs> but the reality is, whatever that thing is that is keeping you from moving forward with the Lord, here this woman said, you know what? I'm taking all of my stuff and leaving it behind. Teenagers, she left her pot behind. Now, don't look guilty, but she left her pot behind. She didn't carry it. She didn't drink it. She didn't smoke it. She didn't hold hands with it. She didn't continue to walk down that mood and that avenue. Now, I know that sometimes, man, that takes the edge off, and sometimes that helps me out. And I even heard a, a brother of mine say, man, if it was legal, I'd do it every single day. The reality is, though, this woman right here, when she looked at her life, she said, you know what, I'm leaving my, my pot behind. Now, I'm not just talking about, you know, that kind of pot. I'm talking about the very fact that that thing which she thought would satisfy her life, that was the thing that she realized when she met Jesus, she had to leave that thing behind. Some of us need to leave our pot behind. What is our pot? Our pot could be that relationship that's driving you away from Jesus. That pot could be that attitude where I have to have more. I want more. I need more. I, uh, I need this thing in my life. That's the only thing that will make me happy, satisfy me, fulfill me. Some of us need to leave our pot behind. The very thing that she came into that well with to fulfill and satisfy her was the very thing that she left behind. And the reason why she left it behind was is because she realized what she had just found was better than anything that she could ever get from that point forward. Can I give you a hint who that was, what that was, what she discovered? She found Jesus. When she found Jesus, then it changed everything. When she found Jesus, then all of a sudden she had hope. When she found Jesus, she had life. When she found Jesus, that inner thirst of her soul, where she was thirsty, 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 
suddenly it was satisfied and that water pot that she had drugged all the way to that well that she thought was the most important thing, she suddenly said, I'm leaving my pot behind. For some of us here today, if you want to know what you could do to walk forward with Jesus, to walk closer to Jesus, to just give everything to Jesus, some of us, whatever that thing is that has been holding on to you, some of us need to leave that pot behind. When she left that pot behind, she was able to run and... Are y'all sleeping already? Oh, y'all gonna... Okay. All right, hold on. Let me pat my head real quick because I'm going to get y'all back in there with me and stuff because y'all killing me. That's why I had y'all up here. Y'all was the only ones I could count on. Y'all, hey, what's up? That's the only one that I counted on. Nope, don't do it now. It's too late. Don't do it now. If I, if I might have to ask for it, then it's too late. You got to stay with me and get into the groove. We're Bobby. I need an organ sound up here as well sometimes. But the reality is that when this woman's life was changed, when this woman found hope in Christ and Christ alone, then she said, you know what? Whatever it was that I brought into this place, I'm not going to stay the same. Some of y'all have been carrying your water pot for 5, 10, 20, 30, 50 years. Water pot filled with shame and regret and guilt. Water pots filled with the life that you wish you would have lived, the people that have hurt you. You are spilling that out on everyone around you. Why? Because you are carrying with you the things that you've held on to in your past for year after year. And if you want to move forward with Jesus, be able to run in the very grace and mercy of the Lord, then you've got to leave your pot behind. This is her message. Verse 29, this was her message. She said, come and see a man who told me all things that I ever did. Could this be the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came to him. And many of the Samaritans of that city, verse 39 says, believed in him because of the word of the woman who testified he told me all that I ever did. You know what ends up happening? When she left behind her pot and all those things of her past and all those things that were just so important to her that found fulfillment, when she left that behind, and she found Jesus, who suddenly gave her hope, fulfillment, and new meaning and direction in life. When she found Jesus, she had to go and share what she was shown. We see that in verse 29 and 30. She had to share what she was shown. She couldn't help herself. The disciples come by and they say, why is Jesus talking to this woman? She says, come and see this man who told me everything I'd ever done. She couldn't help herself. When she was walking down the city, she told every person in that city, yes, I'm a sinner. Yes, I've made mistakes. Yes, I've been married five times. I'm not living with the right man. But when Jesus came and changed her life, then all of a sudden she just simply had this message. Y'all need to come and see this man that changed me, that gave me hope, that gave me new life. Y'all need to come and see this one. And she had to tell others what Jesus had done. See, she had to leave her pot behind in order for her to get off of her behind. Hmm. That's where y'all should have said amen. I'm not telling you that would have been a good amen time. If I kick my leg like this, that means y'all get to say amen too. All right. So if I say run, y'all say, if I do this, then y'all are, okay, thank you for that. Got to teach these childrens nowadays. But here's the reality. See, she, she left her pot behind, but then she had to get off her behind and say, you know what, I got to tell somebody. I just can't just sit here and, and just hold on to this knowledge about what God has done in my life. I just can't sit here. She wasn't a theologian, although she, you know, she, she knew about Samaritan's way of worship. She wasn't a mathematician, even though she could count one husband, two husbands, three husbands, four husbands. She, she, she wasn't one of those folks who was a well digger. She might have been a gold digger, but she hadn't dug that well where she's out there getting that money. She, she wasn't all of those things. But what she was is a sinner who had found a Savior who is Jesus Christ. She was just a nobody who found somebody who's going to go tell everybody about what God had done in her life. I mean, listen, all she could do when Jesus had changed her life, all she could do was run and share and tell other people what she had been shown herself. Let, let me give you a little story to illustrate this. There was a woman who went outside her front door. When she went outside of her front door, she looks and she opens the door, and there was three boxes of groceries. They had some mashed potatoes, had some corn, had a little bit of that au jus gravy stuff that you put, had some little ground gravy mixes. They had some, like, you know, uh, a couple of boxes of rice, had some meat in there. And so all of a sudden, boy, this woman right there, she just starts praising God. She says, God did it. 
God did it. God did it. She was so excited. And all of a sudden, this man, he jumps out of the bushes and he says, God didn't do that. I did that. She said, no, God did it. God did it. God did it. He said, no, I'm your neighbor. And I, you know, I don't believe in God. I was listening to you while you were praying just a little while ago and praying that God would supply you some groceries and stuff. And she just kept on saying, God did it. God did it. He said, no, God didn't do this. Because when I heard that little prayer, I went to the grocery myself. I went and I got all those things and I put them down here and I put them in the box. I hid in your bushes and I knocked on your door. I'm the one that did it. And she just said to herself, no, 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 no. God did it. God did it. God did it. Let me tell you what God has done. So all of a sudden she looks at him and he says, no, I want you to know I did it. I paid for these groceries. I put them in front of your door. I did all of this. And she said, oh, God did it. God did it. God did it. And he made the devil pay for it. <laughs> she had a story. She knew what God could do. She knew what God had done. And when she had seen what God had done in her life, she had to run. And because of all of a sudden, when she understood what God did in her life, that she could not just keep it to herself. She had to run. And I mean, I'm telling you that she understood what God did. And so God did it. I'm just telling you that God, when, when she understood what God had done in her life, she could not hold that back. She could not leave it behind. She got off of her behind and she went and told somebody about what God had done in her life. Oh, listen to me, friends. If you call yourself a believer in Jesus Christ, if you say that God had saved me, he rescued me, he delivered me, and you ain't told nobody about Jesus, what good are you here on this earth for? One of these days you can worship. Well, amen, you'll worship in eternity in heaven. That's good. And you ought to worship now because one day you'll do it in all eternity. One day you'll fellowship and you'll sing kumbaya with all your brothers and sisters in Christ. And they'll be like, oh, I'm so glad that Jesus saved me. And you'll be, you'll be happy and glad. You know one thing that you cannot do when you get to eternity that you can only do here on this earth? It is tell somebody about Jesus. Because when you get to heaven, it's too late. When they're in hell, it's too late. When you go and you're separated from all eternity, it'll be too late. The one thing that you can do here now that you cannot do for all eternity is to get up off of your behind and tell somebody about what God had done. God did it. God did it. God did it. And all she could do was she left her jar behind got off of her behind and said, I got a fire up inside of my bones, what God had done in my life. Let me tell you, God did it. And oftentimes, if you look at the blessings of your life, he made the devil pay for it. All of a sudden, you had somebody get on your last nerve, and, and all of a sudden, they did this thing against you and that thing against you. But God pulled you through. He watched over you. God did it. God didn't. Hasn't God been good to anybody in here? Hasn't God saved you? Hasn't he rescued you? Hasn't he watched over you? Hasn't he been faithful in your life? Did God not do more than you ever ask? Imagine, didn't God just quench a thirst in your soul? And so look what happened to this woman. All of a sudden, verse 40 says, when the Samaritans had come to him, they urged him to stay with them, and he stayed there two more days. And many more believed because it was his word. And then they said to the woman, now we believe. Not because of what you said, but we ourselves have heard him, and we know that this indeed is the Christ, the Savior of the world. You know who this woman was? She was thirsty. You know who this woman was? She, she was the one who everyone knew. Mm. Look at her. One husband. Two husband, three husband, four husband, five husband, ha, ha, ha. You know that little Count, Count Dracula, Chocula, whatever his name is, who counts in Sesame Street. They, they knew everything about this woman. They knew her mistakes, failures, shame, regret, everything. They knew why she didn't come in the morning to be with them. They knew what they would say about her when they saw her. They knew all of these things about this woman who even now was living in sin. Everyone knew her story. Everyone knew her past. Everyone knew about her. But from this point on, this woman said, you may know what my past was, but you don't really know me now. Because the now, she knew that everyone was about to know about her Jesus. See, she was... She was usable to the Lord even though she had been used up by the world. Let me, let me say that just one more time. She was, she was usable to the Lord even though she had been used up by the world. Oh, everybody would have looked at her and said, oh, you know what? No, she's trash. 
Everybody would have looked at her and said, you know what, she, she, she thought, she, she, she too much, she, she just had too much issues and things. And, you know, she had too much stuff going on in her life. That, that, that's, you know what, too much drama, too much issues, too much stuff going on. So, so we don't want to be around that person. God could never use someone like that with a past, with their mistakes, with their addictions, with their shame. They used to walk this way. They used to go clubbing on that place. They used to smoke this, drink that, do this with their body, do that to other people's body. That's all that people knew about her. She was used by the Lord. And yet the Lord said, you know what, you're still usable to me. For some reason, some of y'all have this idea in your mind that your sin is way too far gone that God could never use you even now. For some of you, the devil has come with so much shame and regret and things that he's put on your shoulder to say, God can't use you. You're too far gone. You've made too many mistakes. Everybody knows about your past. Everybody knows about your present. Everybody knows all these issues. And the Bible says that God took even somebody like that to be the very first person that God testified and told about who Jesus Christ was. He used even a woman like that. Listen, she was able to tell that story because of what God had done in her life. Tell, tell what? Running, running what? Tell what? What story are we supposed to tell to others about this God? Run and tell that he is the one who saved you. Run and tell that he's the one who forgave you. Run and tell what God has done in your life. Run and tell people what a Savior can do who can deliver them and set them free. Run and tell them that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. Run and tell them I have hope in heaven. Run and tell them that there is a glory to come. Run and tell them that every one of my problems that God will work that thing out. Run and tell them that I used to drink. I used to smoke. I used to do this. I used to do that. But God has set me free. He has delivered me that God would change my life. Run and tell what you have seen and God has shown you. Run and tell what only the Lord can do. Listen to me, friends. That's why I love this church. Teenagers, look, look, look at the people real quick. Look at them. Look at them. Would you look at them? Look at them real quick. Now, now cross your arms like they do with y'all sometimes. Cross them like, mm-hmm. Give them a stank face because sometimes they look at y'all like these teenagers nowadays. They built different and stuff. They, don't, they ain't got no respect. Nothing. Look at look at. Right now, some of these folks, their hair is all dead right. Some of them back in the day, they had rat tails. Some of these back here, they used to wear Z Cavariches. Look it up online. Some of these folks right here used to wear Juco jeans and stuff. They was like flared out way back here. Some of these folks, if it wasn't for Jesus getting them home on a Friday night. Some of these folks, if their beer goggles wouldn't have been on tack, they'd been with some ugly people in their life. Look at them. It's the, it's the one laughing. So some of these folks, if you look at them. Some of these folks that you see, they good up standing Christian folk. They deacons and stuff now. Some of these folks right here have put more garbage into their bodies. They've done more stuff with their bodies. Their eyes have been on more internet sites that you can't even imagine. That's, that's these people. Right? But if you look at some of them, some of them God set them free. Some of them God worked in their life for some of them. They know if it had not been for Jesus, I would be either in jail, in prison, in the grave. If it had not been for Jesus, I would have been with her or with him. If it had not been for Jesus, I would have still been hanging around the same folks, doing the same things. If it had not been for Jesus, I would have still been on the road to hell. But God, in his infinite mercy and grace, because of his great love that he showed us even while we were still sinners, that God would send his son Jesus Christ to die for us, that it would be so easy to accept him, such as a child would call upon the name of the Lord, just like you and I, the Bible says, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord. Jesus even said this. He offered to this woman, he says, if you knew who offers you living water, then you would simply ask of it. Now, I just want to say this, and this has nothing to do with this sermon, this little land yap and something. But he said, if you would just ask for it, I would give it to you. If you would just ask for this well of eternal life, I would give it to you. You ask, you say, you know what, by free choice, free will, free pardon, I'm going to ask him, and then he will fill and he will give me what I truly need, which is salvation from Christ. He didn't say it was pre-planned, predestined. He didn't say, no, he, all he said was, if you ask, 
If you say, Lord, would you? Then he said, yes, I will. I just throw that in there for a moment. Because I want to, uh, hey, 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 bro. Give me real close up on the, on the camera thing real close. All right. Those of you watching online, haters or not, I just want you to know. I know that in our community, now there may be some folks who right now may say, you know what? Is that a Calvinist church over at Westside? Is it an Arminian church? What is that kind of place? Can I tell you, I say that whosoever will shall, because those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And Jesus here in this passage says, if you just say that I can call and ask for this water, he says that he will give it to you. That means you have a free will, a free choice. So I just want you to know, if you want to say, is the preacher over at Westside a Calvinist? Then he will say, no. That's just what it is. I just believe the Bible says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So I would say that God himself would give you that free will opportunity and choice. I'll just give that to you as Lanya for just a moment. Because I want you to know as your pastor that as we come together, we see that this woman right here, she went and told a story. Why? Because of what God had done. And this church right here, and the reason why I told you to look at these folks is because if you ever say to yourself, God could never forgive me as a, as a young person, for all that I've done, I believe in the God who can still change and deliver. In this church right here, if you've never been here before, can I tell you, you're seated next to sinners. You're seated next to folks who in the end say, we just simply need Jesus. So she ran and told that. I want you to know. She ran and told everyone. An entire city about what God had done. Can I tell you this morning? That I'm glad that she ran because we get to hear her story. But there was another one who ran one time. And I need to paint you a picture. It's a picture that Jesus painted. It's a picture of a, a boy who had everything. All of the blessings of the father were given to his son. He had two sons. This was the younger boy. And all of a sudden, this son was given everything, and the dad looked at the boy one day, and the boy said, Dad, I want to go do my own thing. I want to live however I want to live. I, I don't care if it's one, two, three, four, five wives, whatever. I just want to go and do whatever I want to do. And so, Dad, give me my inheritance before you're dead. That's offensive in all means. He said, just give me everything that I, I got coming to me, and I'm going to act like you did, and I'm going to leave your house, do whatever I want to do. So the boy goes off, and he he just walks his own way, walks away from his daddy, his daddy's house, the blessings of his father. And all of a sudden he's there and he finds himself living and wasting his entire life. He gave everything away. Some of these folks, young people, if you didn't know them then, they were a moment back then from just giving everything and wasting their entire life until God got a hold of them. But this boy, we know him as the prodigal son. He left everything that he knew and went and wasted all of his life. And when he wasted all of his life, that Bible says that he ended up with nothing. And he finds himself in the middle of a pig pen to where he looks around and he says, What am I doing in a place like this? It was so much better in my daddy's house. I'd rather go back and serve my dad as a servant in his house than be right here in this pig style where I am. And so he comes up with a plan. I'm going back to daddy's house. And when I'm going back to daddy's house, I'm going to tell him, Dad, I've sinned, Father, against heaven, against you, and I want to come back. And I'll just put my, myself, i lay myself before him. So he came up with this speech. And then all of a sudden, the Bible says, teenagers, look, the Bible says that when he turned around and walked back home, that there was someone sitting on the porch, and that somebody sitting on the porch was all of a sudden, when his, his dad saw his boy walking down. He, he realized how he was walking. The Bible says, remember, this is Jesus talking about God the Father. The Bible says that when this father saw his son coming back home, that that dad didn't just look at him like this. That dad didn't just start waving a finger. Don't you come back here, boy. You know what you've done. Don't you ever come back to my house. That's not what he did. He didn't even get off of that porch to get a little closer look. The Bible says that when that dad saw his son coming back home, that the Bible says 
that that dad got off of his porch, took his robe and put it inside his belt, saw his boy, and that dad just started. And he said, no, oh, oh my boy. He said, oh, let me, let me find my kid. And that, that dad started running to where his boy was. And she ran and told that, but when God saw his son come back home, the angels of heaven were rejoicing, but God the Father met that boy right where he was. Can I tell you today, some of you have sins worse than those five husbands and living with somebody else that that woman had. Some of you have been used up, tossed around and thrown out by the devil. You've ran the ways of the world. You've chased everything that this world could bring to you. And then all of a sudden, you've left yourself in a pig pen. And yet God, when he sees one repentant sinner who says, I am so empty and God is more than enough. I am so lost and I need a savior. My sin is too heavy to carry one more day. I'm leaving my pot behind. I am coming to realize that there's a savior of the world whose name is Jesus Christ. And the Bible says that this dad ran. He ran to me. He took me in his arms, held my head to his chest and said, my son's come home again. He lifted my face, wiped the tears from my eyes and with forgiveness in his voice, he said, son, do you know I still love you? And he caught me by surprise when God ran. He had to go through Samaria. He had to meet this woman right where she was so that she could leave that place to run and tell that. When you leave here this morning and you realize that there's a Savior who offers forgiveness, then that pew and that aisle and this altar would be a place that you could run right to it and say, God, I need your forgiveness. Right there in that pew or at your house, you could say, you know what, I need Jesus to forgive me and to rescue me. Right today, if you've never accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior and you've never understood the free pardon of sin by asking Him to come into your life, the Bible says that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Young people, that means y'all. Y'all could walk down and say, I need to give my life to Jesus and be saved. Those of you at the top, right there in the very back of the uh, auditorium, in the balcony itself, you may need to run and come down here and say, I need to give my life to Jesus. For just a moment, would you bow your head right where you are? This morning, you may need to say, I need to give my life to Jesus. Those of you that are going to be baptized this morning, I invite you to meet Tony at the front right now. Those of you who remain, though, I'm going to ask you, is today the day that you give your heart and life to Jesus Christ? Is today the day that you finally surrender and run to Him? You've run after everything and it's left you empty. Is today the day that you run to Jesus? Father, I thank you for this moment, this time. But God, I pray that today, there's someone who's never called upon the name of the Lord that this morning would be their time to do that. This morning would be their opportunity to say, I'm finally running to Jesus. I can't live this way and act this way and walk this way and continue to be dead in my sin. This morning I need a Savior who is Jesus. And so Lord, have your way. Lord, be glorified during this time. We thank you most of all for a Savior who would run and meet us right where we are so that we can have eternal life with you in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand together this morning? As we stand together, if you need to make a decision for Christ, we invite you to come to the front as we do that today. In the morning When I rise In the morning when I rise in the morning, when I rise 
give me Jesus Bring them babies up here for me if you don't mind. Let them sit right here on the stage. Come on up here with them. While you're doing that, grab Jalissa's card for me if you don't mind. I want to make you aware of uh, just a couple of decisions before we celebrate baptism and Miss Miranda comes and sings for us. This morning, I, I want to introduce to you, we are thankful for what the Lord has been doing in our lives of our children. And so, Jalissa, could you come and stand? Uh, Y'all come on up on the stage, all the way up on the stage for me. Jalissa, stand in front of folks. I want to say a huge word of thanks um, not only to, to Macy and to Danny and the rest of our children's workers who help so much with them, but to this morning, Jalissa's asked to, to receive Christ as their Lord and Savior, and she says amen. We praise the Lord for that. And this morning, not only does she want to um, give her life to Christ and pray to accept Christ, but also this morning she comes to say, you know what, I, I want to be baptized and follow the Lord in believer's baptism. And today we celebrate with, her, with that. Upon her baptism, do we have a motion that we accept her into the church family west side? We got a motion there. Do we have a second as well? We got that second. All in favor, would you just say amen? Praise the Lord. Amen. One more for a moment. One more I want to, uh, Brother Jacob, would you mind standing up for us this morning? Um, Next week, uh, I, I've seen him sing and stuff and worship, so he'll be standing next to Brother Reuben up here on the stage next week, all right? So we're going to get him to do that. Uh, but today, uh, Jacob is a baptized believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, and he presents himself to the Westside Church family, so I'd like to be a part of what God's doing here, become a member here. Would you, uh, you might want to make a motion that we accept, Brother Jacob. All right, we got that motion. Do we have a second as well? All right, would you just say amen this morning? Amen. Amen. Hello, so look, before, uh, before you leave, as we're about to hear this song and then celebrate with baptism, I, I hope that you'd extend to them both the right hand of Christian fellowship, welcome them to the family. And so this morning, uh, as we do that,
Go ahead and be seated, all y'all, and then we'll hear this song. We'll celebrate baptism. All right, y'all sit down real quick. This goes out to every outcast and to the just don't quite fit in. Every wrong way, runaway rebel, I'm so ashamed of where you've been. This goes out to every searcher, trying to fill that empty space. Well, your searching days are over now. Y'all look up this way. All right, y'all look up this way. Watch. We're about to watch something exciting. This here's an opportunity for us to celebrate. Amen. All right. It is an opportunity to celebrate at this time. We just thank the Lord for what he's been doing. Uh, this water is freezing cold, but um, it really is. It's cold this morning. So just get ready. I wanted to pre-warn them. Come on, Colby. Come on here. JC, you come on with him and all. He's used to this kind of water because this is like the... Uh, <laughs> This is creek water. He's, he's a river rat and stuff. Jason, come on in here. <laughs> Don't shiver too bad. All right. Look, I want to introduce you to what the Lord's been doing in their lives. Uh, we are excited about both of them. Not only uh, are they family, but now they're part of the family of God. And so, um, so I'm going to ask you, stand right here for me if you do it, Jason. Kobe, let me ask you, if you accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then it's my privilege as your pastor to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried with Christ in baptism. Grace to walk in the name of supplies. Amen. 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 
And this here is JC, and I appreciate her and her family and all. And so this morning I'm asking you the same thing. JC, have you accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? This is my privilege as your pastor to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried with Christ in baptism. Wait for walk in the newness of life. Amen. Amen. All right. Next up, we want to celebrate with Amber. Don't, don't forget, uh, we have another baptism service coming up on, the, um, on Mother's Day. And so if you're, you're looking and thinking, well, I missed out today, there's an opportunity for you to do that. We have several lined up for Mother's Day as well. As we gather together, come here and turn around. I know it is, it is cold, which is good for you. And so, um, all right. So let me ask you, Amber. Uh, it's been a blessing to know Amber over these years. And Amber came to me the other day and said, you know what, I, I need to make this decision for Christ. I'm going to stop talking and I'm just going to say, have you? All right, I ain't going to talk anymore. She's shivering up here. All right. Have you accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? It is my privilege as your pastor to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried with Christ in baptism, raised for walking in the name of the blind. Amen. Amen. So I got a couple quick announcements for you guys, and then we'll get you out of here. Uh, the first one is this Saturday is our golf tournament. It's the, all the funds are going to go towards helping our student ministries go to camp. Also, we're going, our youth are going on a mission trip in July, and so 